Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, in this video we are going to be looking at the management of field workers. If you're doing any kind of uh, large scale research, whether it be telephone using call centres or any kind of interviewing face to face type work, uh, you're not going to be able to do it alone. So there's a good chance you are going to be hiring people to do some of this work. Maybe that you're subcontracting some of this out, so some of the uh, some of this work may be covered by an organisation that you are paying, but still good to be aware of uh, the selection process, things to think about, uh, things to consider when we're training new staff, uh, as well as looking after them during the research process. So the supervising, validating and evaluating tends to all fit together pretty closely. All of that's happening uh, as a bit of an ongoing process while you're collecting your data. So we really want to make sure that we're recruiting appropriate people for our data collection. We need to keep in mind what mode of data collection we are going to be using. So if we are going to be doing telephone interviewing, uh, then no doubt we want people who can clearly articulate themselves via the telephone. Uh, so they have um, pleasant expression, they're easy to listen to, easy to understand. Uh, if we've got people doing face-to-face -face interviewing, then uh, they need, we need kind of a certain certain kind of appearance. We don't want people who uh, look menacing or intimidating uh, because that's likely to turn people off, scare them away, make them less likely to uh, engage with your research. Uh, we also want to take into account the kinds of things that we might be asking people. Uh, particularly if we're asking quite sensitive questions, perhaps they're gender related, uh, then maybe we need to think about well, would it be more appropriate um, for perhaps women to be surveying women and men to be surveying men uh, if, if we were talking about quite sensitive uh, topics that perhaps uh, someone might not want to share with someone of the opposite sex. Could be that uh, depending on our target population, that having bilingual or multilingual interviewers uh, or staff could be very valuable as well. Uh, we might consider that uh, we have apply our survey or doing our interviews um, in multiple languages, and so that way we may be able to get more representative data for our population. If we have people going door to door, and it's going to involve uh, a lot of a lot of walking. Um, then we need to make sure that they're going to be able to get to the sites that we require them to. Uh, they are going to be able to go to go door to door. Uh, ideally, we want if if we can have people that already have some experience. Uh, it's certainly going to be excellent. Uh, if not, though, uh, we should make sure that we are very thoroughly training. Uh, any staff that we take on so that they know both what to experience, uh, what could happen if you, particularly if you're going door to door, it's quite likely there's a few times you might have a door slammed in your face, people don't want to do, uh, don't want to do your research, uh, but also how to go about collecting the data. Um, one of, one way that uh, you can potentially get quite big inconsistencies in your data is just by the variation between staff and there's been research that's shown that even for very very quite uh, kind of harmless innocuous little things that just just little things like tone of the voice of the person uh, their body language and mannerisms if it's face to face can actually influence the way that people will interpret and answer questions in the kind of data that you can get so you between interviewers uh, different interviewers may end up getting slightly different data out of the same person One of the ways we want to try and address that is to make sure that our training is as thorough as possible. We want to cover as many details, uh, we want all of our staff to be very familiar with the questionnaire or the, the collection, uh, whatever collection device they're using. Uh, so to be familiar with the exact wording, the order, uh, if they're having to read out to people or talk to people, making sure the questions are read slowly and clearly. And having answers to people's questions, so if someone doesn't understand what a question means, uh, having our staff being able to consistently uh, answer so that 
the same interpretation is always applied. Sometimes people may have questions about the overall study as well. So making sure that our staff have enough information to know what it is the data is being collected for, what it's going to be used for, is very important as well. If we've got any unstructured components, uh, so someone is uh, perhaps interviewing, then we want to try and make sure that it is recorded, whether whether actually um, voice recorded or written down uh, exactly as it is said. We don't. We really want to try and avoid having our staff from adding their own subjective interpretations. You could imagine that if each one of our interviewers is uh, applying their own interpretations uh, to summaries of what someone has said, and then we're trying to analyze that and collect it together, we have two different levels of subjectivity uh, that will potentially bias uh, or, or cloud our data. So by getting everything verbatim, then we are going to be able to have a much clearer picture of the data and less, less likely that we're getting some particular person's spin on it. As with our surveys, um, something that I always encourage uh, people to be doing if they're interviewing, doing anything face-to-face -face or on the telephone, uh, is being being appreciative um, and certainly genuinely, genuinely appreciative of the person's time. Uh, so making sure that they are, are thanked. We want people that participate in research to have a positive experience uh, so that they will continue to be participants in research. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to find research participants as people get busier and also as they get surveyed more and more. So it is really important to give them a positive experience. We also want to make sure that our interviewers uh, note down anything spontaneous that the person might say. So they might have gone through all the questions and then uh, the respondent might say something else which is actually quite valuable. So having having the facility to be able to note down anything spontaneous as well is very useful. Once we've selected our third workers, we've trained them, uh, they're going out and collecting the data. Uh, we really want to make sure that uh, we're keeping a good eye on the process. So we want to make sure that the data that they're collecting is of use. Uh, if they are giving people paper surveys, making sure that the writing is legible. If they are recording the results, the uh, answers themselves, making sure that their writing is, is legible, making sure they're writing everything down, making sure that all the questions are getting answered. Uh, little practicalities like hours worked and expenses and things like that are going to be important. Uh, we also want to keep track of uh, things like, say, how many interviews they're doing. If we're looking at a call center, Maybe most of the staff are doing 10 interviews per day. We've got someone that's doing 20. Um, maybe we need to check on that. Maybe they are Maybe they are just very good. People feel like the sound of their voice and they're very agreeable. Uh, but maybe they're, maybe they're skipping something. Maybe they're going too fast. Maybe they are falsifying uh, some, of, some of their surveys. So we want to keep an eye on our extremes. So the very, the unusually high, also the unusually low as well. Uh, if most of the people are conducting 10 interviews a day and we've got someone that's doing five, maybe they just like to talk and they're uh, chatting a little bit too much. Um, maybe there's some reason why people aren't responding to them. Maybe we need some additional training, uh, just or at the very least some observation to see what's going on, why they're going so much lower than everyone else. Maybe they're just unlucky. Maybe the, their random selection of um, sample candidates has just had more people that aren't interested in being involved. Really the more data keeping we can do the better, so keeping keeping track of um, not at homes and calls made and refusals and anything that might relate to response rate, might relate to our sampling, might re relate to our approach, uh, give us ways to review how we've gone about doing our research are going to be very valuable. A few other things for us to keep in mind. So the control of cheating, uh, we want to keep an eye on this with uh, all forms of data collection, both cheating on the part of any of our staff, uh, if we have someone that's going out and is supposed to be going door to door and maybe they're just 
sitting in McDonald's and filling out all the surveys themselves. That's uh, going to be very, very bad for our data quality. So we want to keep an eye on um, our the results and what, what's coming through in the data that's being collected day by day, but also cheating on the part of participants. Uh, particularly with web surveys, we will see people will uh, quite often be doing them for some sort of remuneration, and so we need to have try and keep track of the person's answers, check for consistency, see whether they're just going click, click, click down a whole lot of boxes, um, because it could be that they're not actually giving us valuable data at all. We may also do some sort of authenticity checks. Uh, if we are doing call center data, uh, then we may be keeping track of the phone numbers we've called. They may be they may, may be linked uh, for quality control purposes back to the person res responses. So we might might be do an audit. We might uh, call up some of our respondents and say, well, we just want to confirm some of the data, and that gives us a way of checking uh, checking firstly that the person was did complete the survey. Secondly, that what they said is um, is in fact what was recorded. This has been a Swinburne production.